Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Now, this is going to be a me video. It's going to be something along the lines of motivating and inspiring because we're going to try and handle managing insecurities. But before we get started, have you subscribed? Please do join the family, join the JK fam. We're here. We're always here having a chat, having a good time, inspiring and motivating one another, but also laughing and having a good time. So definitely do subscribe and click that notification bell if you want to see more of me, of these videos, of all the things. Um, yeah, so we're going to be talking about managing our insecurities today. We're going to get into it. And I'm going to give you four ways in which you can help start yourself or kickstart yourself into learning how to manage your insecurities. While you're here, do the thing and let's get started. So before we talk about how you can manage your insecurities, we need to talk about what insecurities are. Now, insecurities come in different shapes and forms in relation to different parts of your life. So you know how if you segment your life into different parts, departments, you know, if you go to a department store, you're going to find like the men's section in the men's section, you're going to find trousers and shoes and whatever. That's what I mean about segmenting, compartmentalizing different parts of your parts of your life. So you've got family, you've got work, you've got friends, you've got whatever else. Like if we look at those three and we talk about surrounding those three, insecurities can spark up in different ways with each and every different department. You get what I'm saying? So with family, you can have insecurities when it comes to any kind of feeling of inadequacy, feeling of you're not good enough, feeling of you need to do better, feeling of being overwhelmed, they all mean insecurity means one thing for every department, but it comes out in different ways with each and every single department. So with your family, you could be uh, having feelings of insecurity when it comes to making your family proud and doing well at school or at work or uh, but in relation to making your family members proud or doing the right thing, um, looking after your uh, parents. If you are somebody who is now working, if you're at school, doing well with your schooling so that you can make your parents proud. Um, whereas with friends, you can have insecurities about, you know, if, if you've been hurt before by a friend, you know, things with trust and not feeling good enough for your friendship group. Maybe you feel like, oh my gosh, you're with these friends who are just boss, boss babes. Okay. And here you are, you haven't achieved much in life or whatever. Now you're feeling a sense of inadequacy about around being about your friends. It can also just generally be um, just feeling like you're not good enough to be around those kinds of people, irrespective of what it is that you do or don't do. You can be better than them. You can be achieving better than them financially and all of that, but still feel like you're not good enough to be around people like that. Same applies with a relationship, a feeling of inadequacy, feeling like, again, you're not good enough. That is what an insecurity is. So... What I would like you to do is if you are somebody who struggles with insecurities, write them down, like segment, get the different department in the store. So this is the store of your life and you would know whatever department that you are in, what in that department makes you feel insecure. What in that department makes you feel inadequate? And what happens is when we have insecurities, um, I feel like there's so much going on in my head that I want to speak and say a lot at the same time. But what happens is when we have insecurities, we often, um, those insecurities encroach into how or how we can or how we can't uh, achieve our goals. So a lot of the time, because you're insecure about your work, because you're insecure, you doubt your work, you doubt uh, what you produce at work, or you doubt how... You know, you feel like maybe your boss doesn't, hasn't taken a liking to you and that makes you feel a little bit inadequate or something like that. That insecurity can then in turn affect you achieving your goals. So it's very, very much linked to how feeling insecure about 
um, whatever it is that you feel insecure about in your life can directly or even indirectly impact you um, living your best life achieving your goals making people proud it indirectly affects how you function and um how you can be the best version of yourself for your life so what i would like you to do is write down segment your life in the house of your life segment it to family to friends to work to whatever the departments are and write down a list of what makes you feel insecure about that particular department so may it be family. I've already done this and I really feel like it helped because when you write things down, you're seeing it, you're actually thinking about it. It's not just making a mental note about, oh, well, I feel insecure about this or that or the other, whatever. You're actually writing it down. You're putting it in paper. You're jotting the paper, the pen on the paper, and you're actually, um, uh, you're formulating it in your mind, but you're also seeing it. On a piece of paper so after you do that I would like you to also pick out the three top if there's more than three in each and every department I would like you to prioritize them in terms of importance which one is the top one that makes you feel most insecure in that department which one is the second and which one is the third and the reason why is because this is gonna lead into this part of the video as to how you can manage your insecurities. When it comes to managing your insecurities, all this means is that finding a way in which you can work around the insecurities that you have, because they're not gonna go away, they're not gonna go away, but what you can do is actually work around that and find ways in which you can mitigate this insecurity or at least drop the level or the intensity of the secure insecurity as much as possible. And this involves you working on you. And the four things that I am going to mention right now are the biggest, what, there's many, there's more than four. If I had to sit and think about it some more, there's more than four, but these are the four top ways that I tried uh, focusing on in terms of managing my insecurities that helped me. So the four ones that I've come up with are one, affirm yourself. Two, embrace the awkward. <laughs> it's true. Three, reflect on the good and four, find or make time for joy. Now these are really, really important, right? So we've got to firm yourself, embracing the awkward, reflecting on the good and making time for joy. Now, this for me is very important because self-love is a major, major component and part of my life. And this, these four things are ways in which you can show yourself self-love so that you can manage your insecurities. I'll explain to you how. Let's get into the first one. You know how people talk about affirmations and daily affirmations? Now in this case, affirming yourself means look at the things that you have done, the small things that you have done in a day or in a week or whatever, but out of those things that you have done, pick out what you did good and focus on that. Focus on what you did good, whether it was a small thing, whether it was a big thing, whether it was helping your neighbor collect his um, uh, messages, what's this, envelopes, mail from the gate and you brought it to your neighbor, whether it's taking your neighbor's dustbin and moving it to their house because it was left at the corner of the street, whether it's helping your colleague figure out a new formula, working formula because you work in project management, or whether it is helping your friend because your friend was going through uh, something really, really uh, traumatic and you helped find some places where your friend could get some assistance or get some help, whether you helped your grandmother, whether you helped your father, your sister, your brother, whatever it may be, affirming yourself is finding the things that you did good, focusing on them for yourself and actually feeling good about it. Focus on it because a lot of the time with the insecurities, we tend to focus a lot on the bad. So what affirming yourself for me means is take the time to recall and remember all the things that you did good this week or today. 
no matter how small or how big and relish in those things and reward yourself by thanking yourself that you know what, there's some things that I did good today. I, that's all I'm asking you to do. It just, just essentially take stock of what it is that you're doing right and note that down. I feel like it's so important to note things down. I am currently reading Think Like a Monk by Jay Chetty, and he's got these little tasks that you can do or tips that you can do each and every week where um, it, 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 it helps with finding your identity or knowing what your true values are or knowing what your, ugh, it's such a pity, it's upstairs, but, or, you know, dealing with negativity, what you can do. And I write, I read this book a little bit more each and each each what am I trying to say I read it a little bit each day and I pick out the task that I have read that he wants us to do and it often involves writing down what he is talking about so writing down what you feel is a value for you so in this case write down what you did right what made you happy affirm yourself Right? Write it down so you can see it and then put it on your fridge or put it in a sticky note in your bathroom or whatever. The next one is embracing the awkward. Now this is very simple and it's very straightforward. It's going to be short. It's basically knowing that there are parts of you that aren't perfect and acknowledge that they are. There's certain parts of you you don't like. There's certain parts of, you know, the department of your life with your family or whatever that you're not perfect at. And that is okay. You don't have to, being perf to be perfect. But if you acknowledge the fact that, you know what, I'm not perfect and that's okay, that is a step forward in making you, one, feel more comfortable with yourself and more uh, aware that, you know what, I am me. This is me. It's fine. It's okay. I don't have to be perfect. And secondly, it also helps you um, um, know that not, not be too hard on yourself because we strive so much to be perfect and we strive so much to seek perfection in everything that we do, in every department and sphere of our life that we forget that it is okay. We are human. Baby girl, you are human. And you don't have to be perfect. And acknowledging that is a great step to um, then uh, diminishing those insecurities little by little. Insecurities never go away. That's the reality. Is that insecurities never go away. There's always something we're going to be insecure about. But here we are talking about managing them. So embracing the fact that you are not perfect is a good way to start to kickstart you feeling even more comfortable with yourself. Because so the next one is reflect on the good. Again, very simple, straightforward. Celebrate your successes. Celebrate the good deeds that you have done. Look at the things that you have achieved and actually celebrate it. If there's one thing that sometimes we fail to do we're so great at celebrating other people we're so great at celebrating oh my god my friend has now become a cfo and she's become a ca or she's become a financial manager blah blah we're so good at celebrating our mates and our family members and all of that that we forget to celebrate ourselves so if you could manage is there someone outside my house okay if you could manage to get up in the morning and you've been feeling depressed for the last two weeks, celebrate that, celebrate that. And the one way you can do that, again, I'm gonna go back to it as I did in the first point, sticky notes, write it down, celebrate your successes. I achieved yada, 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 and stick it on the fridge. And I did this, yada, 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 and I got to 17,000 subscribers, yada, 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 and stick it on the fridge, or stick it in the mirror in your bathroom. I am beautiful, I love my hair. Whatever it may be, if you feel like you did good here, celebrate that. Celebrate your successes, celebrate your achievements, and then reward yourself for it. And I feel like a lot of the time, we don't do that. We're just like, oh, well, yeah, you know what, I, I did that, you know, I landed that job, you know what I'm saying, I was working on that report, and I landed that job, and you don't reward yourself. Why? Because I feel like rewarding yourself, whether it may be with a night out, can't quite do that, third wave, uh, whether it may be 
with a bowl of ice cream or your favorite takeaway or your favorite meal at a really nice restaurant or whether it may be traveling or uh, uh, going on a trip or whatever. Reward yourself for the good work that you've done. Reward yourself for the good deeds. And if you can't do that, reward yourself the way that you would like to, at least remind yourself of what you've achieved. And the one way you can do that is put the sticky notes there. Put them there so that you can see because we don't, we don't. I could sit here and not feel, I feel like, oh my God, I could have done this better or I could have done this better. And then I realized that, you know what, but it's okay. I need to always remind myself to celebrate myself when it comes to my channel and how far I've come. I can't, it's hard a lot of the time because I'm just like, yeah, but I could, I could be better, I could be better. And I forget to celebrate the fact that I've helped so many people. I forget that my content is content that I, I want. I love the content that I'm giving out because it helps other people. I forget that. So sometimes you gotta learn how to celebrate yourself and celebrate your successes and then jot them down. The last one, very simple. Find time for joy. Find time for things that make you happy. I know I always have this conversation with Figila so many times that joy and happiness, contentment, they're not the same. Joy is, is, is overwhelmingly long lasting. So when we talk about it, like it becomes ingrained in you. It's a part of, it's, it's who you are at your core, right? Because happiness is quite fleeting. You can have it for this really small moment and then that's it. Uh, whereas with joy, if you radiate joy from with, within you, inside you and it comes out it's more long lasting it's just that's what if you strive to achieve that or get joy from your life oh but we can that's a whole topic for another day make time for joy so whatever joy means to you make time for it if joy means reading a book which for me is joy personally for me is joy i'm reading a really crazy book right now by karen slaughter and i read it in the morning before I get ready for work. And I love it. It gets me started for the day. I'm gonna possibly read it even now after I'm done recording and all of that. And it's going to, you know, end off my day in a really great way. So find time for the things that make, give you joy, give you happiness, whether that may be with your family, with your friends. Try find time to make time for the things that bring you joy. I mean, find time to make time for the things that bring you joy so that might be reading cooking if you're somebody who loves cooking cook cook a great meal put on your radio your speaker and be in your kitchen and just go ham and cook because that is the stuff that propels you that is the stuff that trumps the insecurities even just for a little while and makes you so incredibly happy Right? So find time for the things that bring you joy. Maybe family, maybe friends, maybe this, maybe that. Do that. Find you know what I'm saying? So it's affirm yourself. It's embrace the awkwardness in you. Right? It's a reflecting on the good and it is finding time for joy. That's all it. That's it. That's it. I hope this video was helpful. I hope this video has taught you something. I hope you took out a pen and paper and you jotted all of that stuff down because, hey, I worked on this video, okay? Okay. So yeah, I hope it helped and yeah, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.